There you go. All right. Welcome, people that are watching right now. We have some difficulties, but I'm saying we're back online right now. So, hello. <laughs> but we're, if you're watching online right now, we're in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. All right, I'm going to start uh, reading with verse 1. Timothy, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You, you have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people um, who will be able to pass them on to others. And then in these scriptures right here, bless you, in these scriptures, the Apostle Paul is talking to Timothy. And Timothy, he was a young uh, man that, uh, he was he was younger than Paul, and, and Paul mentored him, and he poured into him. And you know, do, you know, do you understand that we're called to pour into people? We're called to pour into people. We're called to invest in people. And that's what Apostle Paul did. He was pouring into Timothy. And Paul didn't know at the time, he didn't know, he, when, you pour, when, you're pour, when you're pouring into things, when you're actively doing it, you don't know the results. But with Timothy, he went on to share the gospel with many people. So Paul invested in him and it, and it came to fruition. And Timothy shared the gospel with many. He accompanied, he also accompanied, accompanied Paul on his mission on his missionary tri um, journeys when Paul was in prison. He accompanied Paul on his missionary journeys. And when Paul was in prison, Timothy represented Paul at Corinth and Philippi. So he, you know, he did, he did some things. He poured into him and it came, it came, um, and, he, and, he, and, he, and it was a good investment. But this all happened because of Paul's willingness to embrace the concept of investing. If Paul didn't, if Paul didn't invest in Timothy, Timothy would have went on to do good things, right? He wanted to see just what, you know, maybe he, he would have done okay things. But, you know, when you invest in something, you get a greater, you know, you get greater things can happen. But we're all called to invest in people, right? We're all called to, we're all called to invest in people, right? Say amen. Can I get an amen, please? Amen. Come on, so we're called to invest in people. We're called to invest in people. That's why Captain wants to do discipleship. We want to invest in you so you can invest in other people. Then you multiply it. Then we, before you know it, we have, we have like 500 people investing in other people. Then if that, that's, how you, that's how you reach people. That's how you reach the community, right? Come on, come on. Hey, man, let's get fired up. I'm just telling you right now that before, when I came to church this morning, so I was ready to start boxing. I was about to lace them up. I was about to start you know, shadow boxing with somebody. I'm saying, because I'm fired up and stuff. The devil's been messing with this church for too long. I'm just telling you right now, we're in a spiritual battle, we're in warfare right now, and I'm saying, if you don't know it, you got, you got to understand it. We're in warfare. There are bullets and missiles flying past our heads. So we got to wake up, we have to transform, and we got to get equipped. Man, I'm, feeling, I'm just feeling fired right now, as far as coming through my veins. We're caught to, um, we're caught to um, do more than thrive. We're caught, I'm saying, we're caught to, we're caught to um, do great things. And it starts with us. We are the church. It doesn't say if you're not doing what you need to do, it's not going to work. Amen. It's not going to work. And Paul knew this, and that's why he invested in Timothy and he invested in other people. Jesus did the same thing with his disciples. He invested in them, and it wasn't a six-week course. It took. I'm saying it took as long as he needed to do it, right? But he invested. Jesus invested. Paul invested. We're called to invest. In Paul's first letter to Timothy, he gave him instructions and advice for leading the church. Because leading the church is not something that everybody's called to do. And it's hard to do. I'm saying, if you ever led the church, if you ever led anything, it's hard to do it. You know, you're dealing with people, you're dealing with spirits, you're dealing with things. So, um, Tim, uh, Paul's giving Timothy instructions and advice for leading the church. He encouraged Timothy not to let others look down upon him due to his youth, but to set an example for their believers. It doesn't make a difference how old you are. I'm saying I'm a young pastor, but it doesn't matter and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do my thing. I'm trying to um, um, reach the command. I'm trying to do things that God's told me to do. And it doesn't make a difference. So everybody here is older than me, but it doesn't matter. But you know what? When I read this, it just encourages me. I'm not going to let somebody just look at me and try to talk down to me because I'm young. You can learn from you can learn from people. You can learn from you can learn from kids. You know, I, I'm, I'm a teacher. I come from the teaching background. I've had little kids, ten years old, tell me some things. And I'm just like wowed by it. You know, I'm just saying I, I am wowed by it. I'm saying I, I'm just like, how do you understand this stuff like that? And it's like I, you can always learn something. So let's turn to First Timothy four twelve. 
And this is uh, Paul talking, speaking to Timothy. He says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. Age is just a number. Amen. Age is just a number. It's just a number. It doesn't matter how, matter how old you are because God doesn't look at age. He doesn't, God doesn't care about, he doesn't look at your age, he looks at your heart. Amen. He looks at your heart. You can say it, you can, you can, you can, you can be older and stuff like that, but your heart, if you have heart issues, you, I'm saying he looks at your heart. He don't give, he doesn't care how much knowledge we build up or what we've done in the past. He cares about your heart. Amen. I want everybody right now to say, I'm not too young. Can everybody say, everybody repeat this after me. I'm not too young. I'm not too old. I'm just right. Wherever you are right now in life and stuff, you are just right. I'm saying you are there, you are your age for a reason, and God can use you at any age that you're in. I'm saying the only thing that holds us back is us, is you. It doesn't say in the Bible about retirement. It does say something about the Bible about retirement in Leviticus, I believe, about priests. About retiring, but it doesn't say anything else about retirement. It doesn't say, okay, when you hit a certain age, you know what, put put, in, put your shoes in and stuff like that, um, get a blanket and you lay down. He didn't say that. It doesn't say that. You know, Timothy was younger, but God used him. All Timothy needed, and all most people needed, somebody to invest in them. Laura, I'm also, I'm glad because all kids need is for somebody to invest in them. And you're that person. You are that instrument. And God is using you. God can use anybody if you're willing and, and able to do it. He will use you. Amen. Amen. And Paul was the person to invest in Timothy. And Apostle, you know, think about Apostle Paul. He understood the concept of investing because he understood the concept of prioritizing. Everybody say prioritizing. And prioritizing, prioritizing is connected to investing. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> but prioritizing is connected to investing. Investing. What you invest in comes from what you prioritize. Amen. Apostle, Apostle Paul made Timothy a high priority in his life. And what Apostle Paul did, he, he acted and filled the role of a spiritual father to Timothy. That's what he did. He filled the role of a uh, spiritual father to Timothy. And why did he do this? He understood, Apostle Paul understood the, the power of prioritizing. There is so much power in prioritizing. Prior, it has power because prioritizing um, directs your path. It directs your path. That's why businesses have teams and departments that focus on strategy planning. Because we, uh, businesses want to Make sure that they're prioritizing the right thing. If you're not going to do, if you're not prioritizing the right thing, you're not going to be in business. But these these businesses and departments, you know, um, they have individuals. They're reviewing and planning and making decisions on how to improve and advance and to expand. Expansion. That's what we're called to do. We're called to. We're called to. We're called to thrive. We're called to expand. We're called to get bigger. And, it's, and all that stems from prioritizing. And the title of today's sermon is called The Totem Pole. Yes, The Totem Pole. We all know, I think we've all heard about that, The Totem Pole. And we're going to examine the power of prioritizing. There's so much power in it. And the truth about prioritizing is that we all have to do it. We have to do it. There's nothing, you cannot get away from it. You prioritize your day every day. And hopefully, at the end of the day, everybody prioritizes um, taking a bath and brushing their teeth, right? That's a priority. Amen. And we all have to decide each day um, what's most important in our life. It, 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 that's what, that's really the truth, though. We have to um, we have to we have to uh, decide. It's a choice in prioritize the prioritizing. It's like no, it just doesn't happen. Um, it just doesn't happen. And I want you to listen to this right here. You have to prioritize life or life will prioritize you. People, you know what? We have 24 hours in a day. Everybody does, right? If you have 20, if you have 25, let me know. I want to see what you're doing. 
I want to see what God, I'll see what God did, did for you that he didn't do for everybody else. But you know what? We have things to do. We have, we have things to get done. We have things we want to get done. And you know, when you prioritize things or you don't prioritize things, they either get done or they don't get done. You know what? You cannot gripe about life if you're not prioritizing life. If you lay in bed till 12 o'clock at, uh, in, uh, at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you can't gripe about wasting the whole day. You're not prioritizing, you're not prioritizing life. You know, I, I feel like, you know what, it's good to sleep in sometimes, but you know what, it's, it's good to have priorities. So we're going we're gonna to look at this today about prioritizing and the power of prioritizing. So if you could bow your heads and we're going to pray. Dear God, we thank you. I thank you for today, God. I thank you for uh, this morning, for the book of Hebrews, God, for Lewis's study. God, I thank you for um, uh, pre-service prayer, God. God, and I just thank you for just um, giving this church... Um, um, another opportunity to um, love on you and to be in your presence. And uh, we thank you, God, for everything that you're doing in our lives, God. And we're not trying to take anything for granted because we know some people didn't wake up this morning, but we did. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I want to, first of all, I want to show you a picture of a totem pole. This is a picture of a totem pole right here. These are totem poles right here. And they're pretty, they're pretty nice. They're pretty awesome looking and stuff like that. But you know what? A totem pole, um, what is a totem pole? Because I know we've seen them. I've, you've seen them in pictures. I've never seen one in real life. But what is a totem pole? And a totem pole, um, totem poles were carved out of giant cedar trees by the Northwest Coastal Indians. And a totem pole was a kind of like a book when you could, you, could, you could read. But instead of using words, it uses symbols of animals and birds. So it, it, there's a story behind the totem pole. It tells you, it, it tells you something. It, it's a story behind it. It's not just, it's not just like a, a piece of wood that's been carved in. It's a story. And, and, I, I, and as I was researching, it tells about, you know, it tells about stories about families and story, stories about um, uh, just about like, um, you know, relationships and different things. But totem poles were used as a way of passing down stories. Um, so there was some uh, reason behind it, you know, so other generations could kind of understand, you know, like what did great grandma, grand, grandpa and grandma, like what was their life like and what did they do? So it was like a story. And uh, we kind of do the same thing, don't we? We tell people about, you know, like, especially a lot of, you know, older people that I met and say, like, I used to, uh, you know, I used to walk to um, uh, school like in five feet snow. <laughs> like, okay. I'm like, all right, I guess you did it. So like, I don't know, it's kind of weird sometimes because every time I talk to somebody like that, they always have the same story. Maybe it's true, I don't know. <laughs> it seems kind of crazy. But you know, I, I, I have to believe what they say. But in the, 19, the mid 1940s, an American named Fred Allen, I don't know if you know who he was, Fred Allen, um, he coined the phrase, low on the totem pole. Have, has, has anybody heard that phrase, low on the totem pole? Okay. And the, phrase, and the phrase is talking about the importance of something. And something that's low on the totem pole means that it's low in importance. Um, it's, it has a low priority. And right now, um, you know, I want to look at the power of priorities in your life. Um, and, when, and, and as I said um, earlier, the truth about priorities is that priorities is that you have to prioritize life and life will prioritize you. Life will just, life will chew you up and, and spit you out. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't prioritize it correctly, but priorities, priorities are important because they are the blueprints of your life. The blueprints, the blueprints are important for anything, for any structure. If you don't have a right and something's off, man, it's, it's not going to be stable. And the truth about priorities is that you, um, is that they drive you how you spend your money, your time, and other resources. Some people like to gamble. That's a high priority. So they go to the casino and they spend lots of money on something that's high priority, um, high, that is a high priority to them. It's not a high priority to me, you know, but I guess they, they feel like it's high priority. Maybe it has a, a reward in it. Maybe they feel like they're gonna hit it big and, and come down with, uh, come back with $5,000. But it's still a high priority. But I wanna, um, I want, you to, I want you to see this right here. Priorities are connected to your thinking and heart position. Your thinking, your mind, and your heart position. And right now I want to turn to uh, Proverbs 23, 7. So there's two things I want to, want to look at today. Your thinking, your thoughts, the mental, and your heart condition. So Proverbs 23, 7, uh, part A. It says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. 
For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As a person thinks, so they are. Is that true? As a person thinks, so they are. Thinking is very important for priority on priorities. The way you think is the way you will prioritize. And that's why you have to be careful of your mind. Your mind can go loopy. And the truth is about your mind is that you, um, there's, you know, not, not everybody should be reading and watching and talking to or allowing anyone or anything in your life. You understand that? Because it has the power to change your mind and change your, to shift your thinking. We have pastors these, pastors these days that have shifted their thinking. I, I was talking to somebody the other week, uh, last week I believe, who was saying, you know what, their stance on certain things has evolved. And it doesn't, you know, things shouldn't evolve, especially if it comes from the Bible. The Bible does not evolve. So I, to me, I believe that this person, this pastor, whoever was, was talking or watching or reading about something, and that's, that's just a lie. That's just, uh, that's deception. That's, that's going to cause division. And I know some people, some of you might not like this, but there's people in our lives, in every one of our lives, that shouldn't be there. Because they are causing you to, they're causing you to um, mess up your priorities. They're causing you to, um, uh, they're, they're, just cause, they're causing you to uh, mess up your thinking. And, you know, you might be best friends with some of these people and live next to them or attend church with them, but, they're, you know, they're, people are toxic. Some people are toxic, aren't they? They're just toxic. And they're causing you, they're, they cause people to get all their, their priorities messed up because they're messing with your thinking. You got to be careful what you put up in this, um, up in your noodle. You got to be careful. You have to guard your thoughts, right? Guard your thoughts. You have to guard your thinking so you can guard your priorities. You know, it's, it's crazy. It's just crazy when you, when you, when I've had, I've had it in my life before. When you, um, when you have a person that you know, when they get along or get around somebody, how they, how they, how they just change. They change, right? They just kind of, they're different. It's kind of like, how did, what, what happens? You got a switch in, that you flipped? You were this way one minute, you were this way one minute, the next minute you're this way. It's, it's because, you know what, it's like, when, you, when, we, when we get comfortable, we let things down. We let our guards down, don't we? And we got to be careful with that because it does affect the way we think. Oh, man. You still with me? Okay. All right. So you just got to be careful, you know, it, it, you know, sometimes one person, one time, one minute, you know, one minute, somebody could be praising God. The next minute, they might be acting like they're full of the devil. So you got to be careful. Let's go to first Peter five eight right now. First Peter five eight. And this is talking about guarding and just being careful about priorities and thinking and just be care being careful. You got to be careful where you go because, if you know, when you walk around with all oh, your shoes on your feet, you might step on glass. So you got to be careful. All right, 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, stay alert. In other translations, say, stay sober. Just, 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 you know, stay alert. Be awake. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And the devil wants to devour you and your priorities. He wants to, he wants, he wants, and you know what, you got, we got to realize the devil prides himself on get getting people off a of track. You, you know that? He prides himself getting people off track. He loves when you reprioritize things, uh, not for kingdom purposes, but for other purposes that are not of God. And and the devil also likes when he can cause detours um, in your walk with him, detours at the church, detours in your neighborhood, detours in America. Right now, the devil um, is, 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 messing, is messing around with, you know, uh, the priorities of America. Thank God, Roe versus Wade reversed. Amen. Amen. I'm saying, you know what? And, and it's kind of just like, you know, I know God's on the move and stuff. He's changing. You know, whatever, you know, whoever the judges, the Supreme Court judges were back in the day, it doesn't matter. God is on the move and, and, and things are getting changed and priorities are starting to line up to God's word. It doesn't say in the Bible, you know what? Abortions should be good. Abortions are, is murder. 
And, you know, and yesterday I did a post on Facebook, 63 million babies um, were murdered by abortion. That shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. It's because the devil is tricking people. You know what? It's just like you have, you know, you do certain things and you know, life comes. And you know what? That's not a high priority. I just thank God for I just thank God for Roe versus Wade the, um, reversal. Thank God for that because I'm saying America, I'm saying we have to get back on, um, we gotta get back and prioritize the right way. I want everybody right now to say, stay on track. Stay on track. We gotta stay on track. America's gotta stay on track. We each as individuals, we gotta stay on track. And uh, yesterday was just one one uh, movement forward to stay on track, getting America back to where it should be, back to the real priorities that it should be. They're saying, save your lives. Amen. All right. Priorities deal with thinking, but they also have to do with your heart, because heart is position. Your heart, your old ticker. If you could turn with me to Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. King Solomon in, 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 this, in this scripture right here is telling us to guard our hearts because your fate, your path of life is at stake. And your path of life is driven by your heart. Your heart ultimately drives your priorities. That's why you gotta keep it that you gotta keep that thing pure. You gotta keep it, you gotta just you gotta go to it um, very often, just I'm gonna say often, and examine it. Examine your heart. That's what we do, communion. You can do communion every day. Examine it though. That's what that's what you know, that's what we're called to do. Examine our heart. And God wants each of our hearts. That's, it. That's what he wants from you. He don't need anything that you have from you. He don't need your talent. He don't need your good looks. He don't need your, you know, he don't need anything. But he don't need your wisdom. He don't know you need your knowledge of the Bible. He wants your heart. He wants your heart. Just cut to the chase. If God could say, if God was, you know, was right here, he would be like, cut to the chase. Jace, I want your heart. That's what I want from you. And if our hearts are positioned towards God, our priorities will follow suit. That's why it's so important to have a heart position towards God. Because when it's positioned towards God, your priorities in life will follow suit um, for, for, to, towards God and to kingdom living. You know, and we all know people that got saved and their whole life, and their, whole, um, their whole focus on life changed. You know anybody like that? Their whole life changed? They used to just focus on, you know, on Sunday mornings. They used to be like, you know, uh, tailgating, getting ready for the big game. But now it's kind of like God's in their life. And it's just like, you know what? My priority is God. It's about kingdom stuff. Kingdom. Man, money and fame. You know, people, things, things, you know, people just focus on so many different things. They have so many priorities besides God. They got money. They got fame. And you know what, God, like once God gets a hold of their heart, it just changes. It changes and their priorities change. It's like they had a heart transplant. And sometimes, you know what, that's what that's what people that's what we need. Before we come to God, we have a fickle heart. And once we come to God, our heart, we we God just supernaturally transplant um, transplants our heart with a heart towards him, right? So let's go to Second Corinthians. Let's go to Second Corinthians uh, verse five. Um, I'm sorry, um, chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined, by, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. So the old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come, because spiritual awakening being, brings a new life. And Apostle Paul is telling us that uh, we become a new creature and get a new heart and a new mind. All the junk, um, all the old junk is tossed off the closet. Off the closet. You know, but you, do, you, do you know that we have to, we have to, we should visit our closet often? We should visit our closet often. We need to, um, we need to see what's in there. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes we think we get rid of something, but it's still there. And it, it kind of pops up during stressful situations and stressful times. And God says, you know what? Get all, get rid of all of it. He says, you know what? He's just like, throw everything away. I want, you're going to start over. You're going to start over. 
You're, I'm gonna, you know what? You're gonna start over, and I'm gonna give you a new wardrobe. I'm gonna give you a new heart. I'm gonna give you a new mind. And the best thing about it, we get new priorities. Amen. A new priorities. We get a fresh start. It's something about it's something about freshness. It's something about when you have a wad that's been the same way um, for ten years, and you slap a, a fresh uh, um, coat of paint on it. It just refreshes, doesn't it? It refreshes the room. It just it's a, you know, painting doesn't cost that much, does it? To refresh something, man. Sometimes you know we need to be refreshed, and I'm just gonna I, I want to just I want to just let you know that you know what sometimes you can be walking with God so long that you need to be refreshed. Because sometimes, you know, that liver, that them rivers of water in your in your in your spirit and stuff like that, they're starting to get a little bit kind of low. And you're just kind of like, man, you know what? Like, God, I need, I need, I need, I need that. You need, you need to refill me. You need to put some more water in my, 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 my spirit because I'm getting a little dry. I'm talking about like I'm talking about, I'm talking about dry. You're starting to get to that, you're starting to get to the point where you, I'm saying you're you're walking around looking for lotion. I'm saying we got we have to I'm saying fresh start man it's just like we are we are we are a new creature there's something about it's something about that newness that newness that we just I'm saying we want we want to keep that newness newness when you got back I remember when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit I remember that same day I was so high it felt like I was on drugs or something like that I remember I went to we had a softball game and I pitched I struck with 10 batters I'm saying, I was just, I'm saying, I've never felt that before. The Holy Spirit was on me. It was, it was just on me, and I felt that. And it's just like, you know, then after that, you know, um, it's been times where it's gone down, but it's like, man, we got to continue just with that freshness, continue getting fresh, and, 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 and it comes down to priorities, spending time with the Lord, right? And praying and asking God, you know what? Man, God, my river is starting to get a little bit um, dry, man. Just like, just, I'm um, just fall on, Spirit, fall on me. Holy Spirit, fall on me. Rain on me. I want to be, I want, I want to be, I want to be wet. I want to be, I just want to have, I want to have the freshness of my life. All right. Let's turn to, and this is, uh, let's turn to Philippians 3, chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. And this is Apostle Paul talking. And this is what happens when you, when I'm saying, when God just gets into your life and just tugs you. You're saying, you know, because sometimes we, we like to do things. By ourselves and just and, and not do do it God's way. We, we're called to obedience. Philippians three verses five through eight, and this is Apostle Paul. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I'm pure. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew, if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous, which means passionate, that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. But this is where it gets good right here. This is when God just when God just intervenes and he just, and that Holy Spirit rains on you. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Worthless. Everything, his whole life is just worthless. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ. Man, this, these, these scriptures right here, this is Apostle Paul's life. His life is a great example of the power of prioritizing. He prioritized, and he prioritized everything besides God. And once God got to his life, he said, no, every, my life up until, um, up until before I knew Jesus was garbage. We take garbage to the landfills to get rid of it because it stinks and it's got a bunch of stuff in it. That's powerful right there. But this is how one encounter, an encounter with God, all it takes to change your priorities. That's all it takes is one encounter with God. And you might be the person, the instrument that he uses um, to provide that encounter. That's why, this is why discipleship and just, and, and having a strong relationship with God is so important. But Paul says that everything he once deemed of high importance, 
he considers it garbage. You know, when I was thinking about this, my wife was talking to me, you know, high importance, we have things of high importance like jobs and things that are just, you know, that, that deal with money and things that deal with just like things that are just, um, you know, and there's lots of things, but just, man, just to say, you know what, things that I deem, uh, once deemed as high importance, he considers as garbage. That's powerful and it's raw. That's raw. You're not gonna get any more raw than that. You're not gonna get, you're not gonna get that much just like truth. If you study the Apostle Paul, you just realize how sold out he was to Jesus. He was sold out. He was, man, he was, he, he was a true ambassador of Christ. A true ambassador. His highest priority in life was God's kingdom. That's why he did so much good. That's why, that's why he wrote out, he wrote out his books. He, he, his writings are so powerful. The book of Romans is so powerful. Um, Philippians, all his, all his letters are so powerful. Because he had, God was his highest priority. When he woke up in the midday and when he went to bed, God was his highest priority. All right. As we close, we're going to close and we're going to close a little bit. But I want to leave everyone right now with four reasons why prioritizing is necessary in your Christian walk. There's four reasons that I just, I'm saying that I, that I, that I, that I want to leave with you why prioritizing is necessary in your Christian walk because it is necessary. Just like hygiene. You know what? You're supposed to wash yourself and bathe yourself. That's high, that's high importance, isn't it? Or you're going to walk around stinking. So, but this is specifically for your, in your Christian walk, why right? four reasons. Number one, prioritizing helps keep you focused on the right target. We have to keep our eyes focused on Jesus. If we don't keep our eyes focused on Jesus, we're going to be focused on something else. And, um, you know, you, you, you run across people and you, and you talk to them and they, and they tell you about their lives. You know, because you know how people do. You know, what do you do for a living? You know, where do you live at? How big is your house? What kind of car do you drive? You know what? That's the thing. You know, that's thing. Those things right there are the right, the wrong, the wrong target. It doesn't matter where you live at. It doesn't matter what job you have. It doesn't matter, matter how much money you make or whatever. But people make that such an, uh, a, a, a priority to talk about because it's a high priority in their life. It doesn't matter. Does it? Does it really matter at the end, the end of your life how big your house is? What kind of car? If you got two Cadillacs and, and, uh, and, a, and a Tesla, it doesn't really matter. You can boast about it and you can say, okay, yeah, you know, but it doesn't matter. Wrong target. You can be motivated, highly motivated, and be successful but still have the wrong target. All right. That's reason, that's, uh, uh, reason number one. Number, reason number two why prioritizing is necessary in your Christian walk. Prioritizing helps you ward off distractions. Ward off distractions. You know, we have to, if, if, you're, being, if, if, if you're truthful, if you're truthful, um, you know, with yourself, uh, there's a lot of distractions in life. There's a lot of different things. There's a lot of mosquitoes, I guess you could say, that are, that are buzzing in your ear. A lot of buzzing, like, and when, you know when you see a mosquito, you turn your head and you, you, you get your eyes off that, you know, whatever you're looking at. If it's a campfire, that's usually when it happens a lot because you're looking at a campfire. Mosquitoes and campfires go together. But prioritizing helps you work off distractions. It keeps your mind off problems and people and things that don't matter because there's so many different things in life that just don't matter in life. You know what? And, and it's like when you hear about something that matters in life, you just, it refreshes you. Just like, you know, I'm going to bring Laura up again. You know, it just refreshes. It, it's refreshing to hear how she's reaching out to kids in the community. It's refreshing. It actually encourages. And that's why that's one of the reasons why I was so hyped up today. Because it's like she is doing she's she's doing what God has called her to do is to reach out and to and to uh, look kingdom minded all the time. And that's that's awesome. That's something that just you know what? That's she's a great example of, of you know of just using operating in your gifts. And she doesn't even know she's operating in her gifts, but she's operating in her gifts. So we just gotta um um we just we we have to be careful. We have to be careful with distractions. Um, and when you prioritize your life, when you prioritize things in your life, you know what? You help ward off distractions because they're there. They're there in our family. They're there at our job. They're there at church. You know, they're everywhere. You can't get around them. Distractions, mosquitoes. All right. The third reason 
by prioritizing is important. Number three, prioritizing helps you manage your time wide, um, time effectively. Prioritizing keeps, keeps you, you productive. We all want to be productive members of society. We all want to be productive Christians, right? We want to be productive. We want to produce. We want to produce good things. We want to, when we get to heaven, we want, we want to hear God say, you know what? You did a good job with that task I gave to you. You were productive. You used every, all my gifts that I give to you, all, your, all my talents that I've given to you um, since birth, and you use them for kingdom purposes. But the devil loves idleness. The devil loves when we waste time uh, and energy on temporal things. Because you know what? The devil has, he doesn't, he loves it because you know what? He has no time. He can, his, 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 um, his judgment has already been done. So he's going to try to get you anything. He's going to try to get you to, get you to do anything um, that's going to uh, take your mind off of a God and his kingdom. Anything. And you know what? And it's like, I know people, people say things, you know, but it's just like, you know what? The devil will use anything. He'll use a car battery. Like I said downstairs, he was um, when I'm uh, actually in the, the pre-service prayer room, he'll use a button that falls off your shirt. And if that, you're just kind of like, man, that stupid button. And you're just like, man, you know what? It, affects, it then affects your whole day because you're focusing on a button, a little piece of plastic. That, you know, that's, that's, how, that's how it is. That's, you know, and, 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 and when you're doing that, when you're focusing on something, um, like a button or like, you know, something, something similar to like, you know what, you're not using your time effectively because your, your mind is just focusing on this little thing that really doesn't matter in the, the end, in, in the end, does it? Does it? Does it matter in the end that you're missing a button? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in the end. You're just missing a button. Hopefully it's next time I see you wear that shirt, you, you got to sew that down. <laughs> That's what it goes down to. All right. In the last... Um, the last um, uh, reason to prioritize um, in your things in your Christian walk it helps you it helps keep you on mission and this is this is the most important thing we've all been commissioned to make disciples which means to take the gospel to all nations to all cities and states to all family and friends to everywhere we go you know we have a, we all we all have a mission. That Jesus gave to all his followers before he ascended to heaven. He said, "Go out and tell, make disciples." And that's why my wife, you know, when she when she was talking about what she's going to do about this disciple of uh, discipleship class, that's why I was like, you know, go green light. You have the green light. Just do it. I didn't say green light, but I just said go do it and stuff like that. That's what we're called to do. We're called to make the uh, make disciples. But you got to be a disciple to make a disciple in order to impact the world. And staying on mission is, is something, it's been a challenge for Christians throughout history. I, 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 do, I do believe that because there's been times and uh, points in history where, you know, Christians have not fulfilled that call because they haven't prioritized things in life. And it's, and it, and it's you know, it, and it's, since the industrial, industrial revelation, uh, rev, revolution is, is hit, you know, it's, it's got even more. You know, we have 40 hours a week that we spend, you know, just working and we have, we have lots of things, other things also. But it's just so, so many different things that are just abiding, trying to get our attention and trying to get our priorities. But, you know, some, but some people have done a good job and um, others not so good. And I believe that everything stems from priorities or the lack of priorities. And every day, we have to examine our totem pole. You know, and I know, I don't have one up here, but if you could see a totem pole, your spiritual totem pole, you gotta just like examine every day. What's, what's of high importance? You know, what's of lower, lower importance and what's low importance? Because some things, some things only need attention. Um, you only need a small attention. And sometimes we, we tend to, sometimes we, we like to put a lot of attention on things that don't, that, have, that need small attention, right? So these are just four things, um, and these are just four things that we just have to, uh, four ways to uh, prioritize our Christian walk, because we have to prioritize our, our walk with God, because if we don't, you know, we're just going to, you know, life is going to prioritize us, and we're just going to be so off, um, so off, so off key, and so off uh, focused that, man, it's just like, we're going to be like, where did, what happened? 
what happened to life? You know, it's just like I was walking with God, but before you know it, I, I was doing, I was just, I'm not walking with, life, with God right now. So I just encourage everybody to, you know, um, examine your totem pole, and your totem pole represents your priorities and, and determine what they are every day. Because I'm saying, if you don't, we're, we're lost, you know. This is, uh, that's what Jesus, uh, Jesus, before he went up to heaven, he told us to do. He said, make disciples. He said, like, go impact the world um, in my name. All right. If you could uh, bow your heads, we're going to pray. Dear God, I just ask that you give all of us strength and courage to examine our totem poles every day. You know what? If we're scared of them, maybe we're scared of them probably for a reason because we haven't examined them. We haven't examined our priorities. We haven't examined, you know, the things of our heart and our mind that you told us at one time, that you told us at one period of, uh, in our life, and we're scared of them. But examination is hard. And it's, because, it's hard because sometimes it gives information that we don't like or want to accept. It's okay, you know, we're all changing. We're all, we're all trying to grow and become more like God. But I pray that today is a day of change. And I pray that today's message spoke to people's hearts and minds. And you know what? And, and I pray that, you know, God, that you just help all of us prioritize. Because nobody can tell, nobody can see and, you know, tell us how to prioritize a life. You give us free will. You, you let us, you allow us to prioritize what we think is important and what we think is not important. But God, put, give us a heart for you. Give us a heart for your kingdom. God, give us a heart for the community. Give us a heart for the kids in our neighborhood. Give us a heart for the lost. Give us a heart to pray for people when it, when, when, when it, might, look like, it might look foolish. God, just give us a heart. Give us your heart, God. And we, we just thank you, God, for... Um, we just thank you, God, for... Um, you know, just being, just being with us, God, and and just you know, well, not allowing us to be with you, God, because you're always here. But just you know, just calling us, calling our names out, you know, calling our names out, and just uh, you know, speaking to each of us individually. But right now, I just want to ask right now, like um, you know, today's message tugging on your heart, and you feel like your priorities are not where they should be. Raise your hand. I just want to pray for you. All right, and if this is you online too, if you, if you feel like, you know, your priorities are just all out of whack and it's just, you know, like you're just doing things and you don't want to do them, that's how you know when you're, how your priorities are not right. When you're doing something and you don't want to do it, but you do it anyway, that's not a good thing to be. But everybody, if, if you're, uh, for everybody online, if you feel to raise your hand right here, I just want to pray for you. Dear God, I just, God, I ask that you give us, give everybody here, everybody that's watching, um, help us. Help us uh, with our priorities, God. Help us uh, make you our higher priority, God. Um, God, just you know, show us things. Show us things in our life that are just that are just take, that are wasteful, that are just basically junk food. And show us how we can replace that with you and your presence and your word and your truth. God, you know, just if it's if it's just praying more, if it's just talking to you more, if it's reading the Bible more, if it's um, leading a ministry, if it's um, going around your neighborhood just talking to people and telling them the good news, God, we just want to be disciples. We just want to, you know, we want to, we want to help people understand, man. It's just like, you know, there's a lot of things in life, but God, you know what? God's the most important thing in life. If it's not for Him, I'm saying, if 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 if, if it's not for Him, we have nothing to live for. God is God is awesome, you know, because things things come and go, but you but you stand forever. You never leave us or forsake us. So I just ask you, God, that you just that you just you know if 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 any of us have any areas in our life where the priority is just like we just know we know that it's not right. God, just just replace it. God, give us some give us um, wisdom. Give us um, give us uh, motivation just to change it because you know what. We can't do it without you because we always go back to our own default. I mean, we just go on just doing the same old, same old. But God, just help us, help us grow and transform and, and equip us to uh, reach out to people that are hurting. All right. Right now, I just want to ask right now, if there's anybody right now um, that's, that, that um, Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Like if Jesus is not your Lord. If you die today, 
The Bible, the Bible says that Jesus is not your Lord, and if you die today, you know you're going to go. You're going to go to hell. You're going to have eternal separation from God. And eternal separation from God, you know, we think we think it's bad right now. It's 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 it's. it's I can't even fathom like what, how it would be to have eternal separation from God, just knowing that you know darkness just is is surrounding you and there's no hope, no light. But if you want to, you know, if you if you if you if you never if you never thought about making Jesus Lord of your life, if you want to make Jesus Lord of your life today, you want to give up your, you want to, you want to do things God's way instead of your way, I want you to, to raise your hand right now. And if you're online and I can't see you right now, um, if, you, if you want to make that decision, it's a choice. God doesn't never, he never puts a, a board to your head or a gun to your head it says do it he gives us free will but if you want to if you're just feeling like you know what i have no peace in my life i have no um i just have no um i don't have any foundation I, every day is just wacky you know what and you want to just make jesus sort of your life and just know where you're you're going to spend eternity i want you to repeat this uh this um the salvation prayer after me dear god i know that i'm a sinner and i ask for forgiveness Right now, I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I believe that God raised him from the dead. Fill me with your spirit so I can know you, serve you, and follow you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, if this was you, if this was you online, um, good decision, great decision, best decision that you've ever made. Um, what I what I encourage you now to do is find a church. Um, we are a church. We're here, and uh, find a church that you know that, you, that that maybe you're you live in another city or something like that. But find a church that you can connect with, that you can just um, um, and start attending. And uh, you know what? You need to be discipled, probably, especially if you're a new believer. You're going to have lots of questions, and lot and, and and some of these questions you're not going to find on your own. And you have people to walk with you, disciples. That's why discipleship is so important. You help people transform, you equip them so they can be disciples. So if you have no church, come 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 join us at Lansing Calvary. We'd love, love to meet you. I'd love to meet you and uh, love to, um, to walk with you in like this, this new this new walk in life. All right. For the rest of us right here, if anybody has any prayer needs, um, if you have any prayer needs, raise your hand. We'll have some people pray for you because we're all equipped to pray. Right? God has called all of us to pray. All of us to lay hands on. There's no, there's nobody like I'm saying. He didn't make you or you um, with a special power of prayer. He said everybody can pray. We're all ministers of the gospel. All right. If you have any, if you have any prayers, raise your hand. If you'd like to come up to the altar by yourself, um, just you know, come up to the altar and you can spend some time with God, talking to Him, praying, praying, and just you know, doing whatever, you, whatever you feel like you should do. But the rest of us right here. We're going to, uh, I'm just going to, I want to say this benediction prayer. This is a prayer of blessing that I always um, pray at the end of every service. And uh, after that, you, I'm saying, you'll be able to, I'm saying, if you, if you need to go, you can go. If you like, like I'm saying, just whatever you feel like God's asking you to do. All right. May the Lord bless you and protect you this week. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you this week. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace this week. Dear God, we just we thank you for today, God. God, we just ask for divine appointments um, in our series of influence, God. We ask for divine appointments. People, put people in our past, God, that uh, um, that need you, that are just looking for something and they don't know what it is, but it's you. So God, I just I, I, I ask, I ask that God that you, that you do this, you, you provide us with divine appointments with people. Um, let us um, give us opportunity to share the good news, share the gospel, tell people, you know what, there's a better way. There's a better way. And God, we thank you. We thank you for what you're doing, God. And, and God, you know, just keep on working on each one of us, God. You know what? You're never too old to learn. You're never, you know, you experience God. You can experience God your whole life. God, Holy Spirit, rain on us, make us um, anoint, uh, just uh, um, make us just make us wet, God. And just and 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 God, if any of us any of us have dry bones, God, just make them dry bones live. So God, thank you for just thank you for everything that you're doing, God. Um, just um, protect us, um, God. If, if there's any need for peace, God, give us peace. And uh, 
just, just thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen.